Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice-monthly talk shows, virtual stitch-ins, book clubs, celebrity interviews, and podcasts. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Our show today is brought to you by QT Fabrics, and we have Mermaid Merriment <gasps> Again. Bundle and Ombre Stitch Pop-Up, which yes. I'm not allowed to play with. Well, I already so, did. I yeah, might have already Instagrammed it. I think you did. <laughs> For all eternity. So today we're going to be talking about batting and things to consider when you do baby quilts. <gasps> and we are joined by our latest quilt pattern, Spotlight, which you can get at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. And the fabric is from QT Fabrics. <gasps> Amazing how that worked out. And interesting, <laughs> there is a bundle giveaway. <gasps> this one right here. With a digital copy of the pattern, Spotlight, um, that we will be giving away yeah, on our so, website. Yeah, uh, so you can click the circle up there with the eye, or you can look in the show notes for YouTube down there, and there'll be a link to the website where you can enter the giveaway. That will be open for two weeks. I feel like we were doing a dance move. Do, do. You know, kind of thing. Yeah, we, we like do have the what, funky sleeves to get away we with could, some wild arm we movements. We could be today. doing disco. Anyway, disco. <laughs> <laughs> so go enter the giveaway. We will ship internationally for all of our fun friends outside. Fun friends. We do have some fun friends. We they joined have. us last night. <gasps> Australia represented, man. I know. And there was Melbourne. like a diehard person in Europe as well. Wow, they're up at late. They, they are. were up late. So, what's up? Um, uh, big news. Big and it is. Rocking the fabric world. Rocking the fabric world. Yeah, so just this week, Cotton and Steel, the original five designers, announced that they are parting ways with Cotton and Steel as a brand and RJR Fabrics. Right. So, the collection that's coming out this spring is going to be their last. I think that's, I mean, I think that's sad because I really enjoy those five designers and their patterns, and I have to admit, I've bought several, mm -hmm. several um, of their collection parts and several of their collections. Yeah, I th that um, imprint's like going to continue. They're keeping. I imagine they're going to bring in new designers. They've also been bringing in some independents to design under that cotton and steel brand, like Rifle Paper Company and and some of the others. So right. That's going to continue. I have a feeling. Of course, the five designers. They seem to really enjoy working together there and they've said on their instagrams independently that they'll we have not seen the last of them yeah so i think that was a hint to us going so too we can't tell you but yeah watch out because i think we're gonna see them reinvent themselves maybe not under well of course not under well, cotton and steel not, yeah. so they could be something else but that was such a great name mm-hmm I mean, I just, I loved the name as well as anything else. So, but they're fantastic yeah. designers and have just created some great, I think, patterns, and fabric patterns that we'll have for a long time. A lot of cats. A lot of cats. They, they did like cats. Yeah. A lot of cats. So I just think we're just going to have to keep our ears open and see where they land and how they reinvent themselves. And I wonder. And I'm excited because I yeah. think they'll be great. And I am curious to see how they are changing the business model of design in the fabric world. That's a feeling. I mean, they innovated a bit when they went with RJR. Right. So I'm curious what, what the new model looks like. Oh, yeah, exactly. I think that'll be very interesting. And there's room for that. I think uh, re reinventing how mm -hmm. we do things is not a bad thing yeah i think you know the industry's changing well when we talked about digital printing right uh, last season i think i mean that's definitely part of it yeah so so very good news i have good good news bad news yeah good news because i think we're going to see some exciting bad news they're not going to be with cotton and steel anymore but there will be other designers we'll see under that brand mm -hmm. which isn't that fascinating like we don't know what we're going to see mm -hmm. so it could be awesome I believe the saying goes, don't cry that it ended, smile because it happened. I had not heard that saying, but I like it. <laughs> Sounds like something up my alley. Anyway. Anyway, so uh, our first topic is actually a viewer request. Right. Uh, so we've talked about batting before. We but have. Specifically, the question around was around packaged batting versus off the bolt or off the roll. 
Yes. Which I would say you can interpret a lot of ways. That's pretty clear. Folded versus rolled. <laughs> so do you, do you prefer, do you use one or the other? Uh, for my everyday quilts, a.k.a. things I make that I know are going to end up being used, washed, loved, um, I just buy a big roll. And it's yeah. an 80-20 blend, and I have a place to store it. Uh, so on the back side of my cutting table, I built just kind of like a big long area, purposefully knowing I was going to store a roll of batting there. And then it's kind of two levels, and on the bottom level is where I still store my rolled up quilts that I'll hang in my living room. Right. So uh, I have to be careful that I keep it covered so the cats just don't decide to go lounge all over my roll of batting. Yeah. Um, that is a consideration. Yes. Yes. Nothing like using fabric to make a batting cover when you don't mean it's a quilt top. <laughs> right. Oh, well, I had a roll of wool bat, which is hard to find. Oh, yeah. And I had a roll of wool bat. It was really on a bolt. Mm -hmm. Like I bought it from a... It's more of a flat fold than a... It was a flat fold, but it was a bolt of it. It was pretty big, good size. Oh, well, yeah. Wool's and, kind of fluffy. Yeah. And uh, Josie decided to create a hole in it. <clears throat> I was not a happy camper oh, with that. Oh, that's an expensive to lesson to learn. I was not a happy camper. So I learned that I had to keep it kind of Upright. sealed out. Sealed. Yeah, and even put plastic around it. I didn't seal the plastic, yeah. but I just kept plastic more around it to protect it. So that was a consideration if you have animals or Saluki specifically named Josie. And <laughs> if you have a long arm and you have like the batting roll hammock, which I think I've seen yes. for several long arms. Uh, hammocks are very intriguing for pets. Huh. They're like, look at me, lounging I can get in on this. space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that would, I, I did see someone put that to help the batting stay off the floor on a long mm -hmm. arm the other day. I thought, that's a great idea. Hmm, I wonder what the Salukis would do. So I, something I have to take into consideration. But you said you buy an 80-20 roll. Mm -hmm. I don't. I buy a 100% cotton roll when I buy a roll of batting. It's I found, usually warm and natural, 100% yeah. cotton, because that's the deal I can get at a certain store. Stores that but are see, like I, box shape. But when I <laughs> uh, order from maybe that same store online, I can get an 80-20 roll. Oh, do you? Yeah. You yeah. just got to wait for the right coupon. <laughs> uh, no, you can now order rolled batting from another box-shaped store that starts with a W. Yeah, I saw it online. It was a really good deal, too. 25 yards, 90 width. Good deal. Now, that's for my normal everyday quilt. Yeah. And, oh, and the reason I buy yeah. eighty twenty is just because it performed better with my machine. Like I, I do like hundred percent cotton too, but I find eighty twenty is a little fluffier. Which, uh, it is. when you're making forts, sometimes you got to watch your structural integrity. Right. That's a consideration. Is it? I, you know, I haven't done the price comparison. Is it more or less expensive than a hundred percent cotton? It's usually a little bit cheaper. Yeah. Not by much. Not like a significant difference over. Oh, right. I can get twenty quilts out of this. Well, and the reason I buy 100% cotton on the roll is because normally if I'm doing any kind of show quilt, I double bat, and I like that 100% cotton, so I don't want that extra fluffiness before I put wool on top of it. So that yeah, is but my when other I, reason. When I buy wool, which is usually for hanging quilts, show quilts, yeah. although I did put wool in my uh, Diamonds in the Sky, my English paper piece. It's like a full-size quilt. Because I'm hand quilting that you one. I would hand that quilt one. in wool or poly. Yeah, I'm hand quilting that in a wool. Not one. cotton, not 100% cotton. No. You will be very sore. Yes. Like it but. stresses your hand. If you're doing that rocky motion, you're stressing the Or even part if of you're your doing hands. a weird stabby motion yeah. because you can't rock it, that still takes a lot of work. Yeah. Um, but I have to buy the wool in a package because I can't find it on a roll. Nor do I feel like I want to store a roll of wool yeah. simply because I don't use it that often. Well, the first time I bought wool on a bolt was at this quilt show, and they had them on the bolt. And I forgot how many yards I got, but it was like 10 or 15 yards. So it was a pretty good deal. But what kind of width was that? Um, it was 90 because it was Okay. Usually they triple folded. folded. Oh, triple folded for that. Yeah. I would say normally for the 80-20 or the 100% cotton, it's a single fold, 90-inch right. width. Yeah. So it's about, you know. 45 so, inches yeah. tall. Yeah. 
So no, it was triple folded. But now that I've had Josie, Josie has never touched my cotton bat. Like she could care less about that. And she walks behind the long arm, mm -hmm. which is they're stored in the corners. Um, but that wool, for some <laughs> reason, fascinated her. So I wouldn't buy it. Smells it. like sheep. She's Unless, a dog. Yeah, could be it. She needs, <laughs> She's not a herding dog, though, so she wasn't trying to get she it. She was trying to eat the sheep. Oh, that could be it. Yes. Um, so, I don't know that I would buy wool on a... I like them in the packages. And I buy big... When I buy wool, I buy a big package. And then I just cut it up and keep reusing. You don't? Yeah, well, okay. So, yes. Yes. But? The problem I run into is I cannot Frankenbat wool because... Stitching it together, like when I have random leftover bits to try and piece it together, it doesn't quite work because you're compressing it by do because I do a zigzag stitch method to join batting pieces. When you do that with that wool, it just smushes it down and makes a weird bump. Tell them what that is because I did that the other day with something I was working on. Oh, uh, baby quilt, not this one. Yeah, Franken batting uh, is when I take all of my scraps and you have to use scraps of similar type, so don't try to franken bat a wool to a cotton because they're going to shrink differently when right. you wash it. Um, I just do the same. Yeah, you just butt them together. Maybe even a little, just a oh, smidge. Maybe just a smidge so, layer So they're top. kind of doing that a bit instead of just a flat yeah. butt. And then when you, I do the widest zigzag I can, which on my machine is a 7 millimeter wide and a 5 millimeter long. Mm -hmm. And just zigzag that together with a thread that matches the batting. Don't be like, oh, I'm just going to use this rando red thread because I don't want to use it on anything else. Because it'll show up. <laughs> as soon as you have white in the background, that'll oh, yeah. show up. It shows up. Yep, definitely. I um I Frankenbat stuff, especially if it's a, a charity quilt or something that I'm not, like, this isn't going in a show. Yeah. Like, if it's a show quilt, man, I don't Frankenbat But you need anything. to make sure that you're quilting goes through the area where the join is because there is yeah. a tendency for it to separate a bit if it's not quilted down. Well, and you don't have to do solid, you know. Oh, yeah. All over it. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. And most of my most of my uh, donation quilts and even baby quilts that I give as gift get Franken-padded. I think I get more quilts out of a roll mm -hmm. of batting than I do a package. Well, yeah, because... I know, because they're the size, the but... the roll's bigger than a package. <laughs> yes, but... Math. <laughs> She's so I got 104 cute. average in geometry that tells me that... I that got 100... Nice. I got over 100 in geometry, too. Anyway, but my point is that <laughs> I can determine the size and cut it right at the oh, size yeah. that I need off a roll. Right. Whereas I'm stuck with the size of bat and... I could have this, if it's packaged, I could have this weird thing and I'm doing more franken batting mm -hmm. than I do with my rolled batting. Yeah, the roll is more efficient. I think it's more efficient. Hmm. Point. Anyway, I thought it was a good point. Yeah, if you hadn't, if, there's no point unless we were arguing and you won, but we were in violent agreement. Oh, okay. So, I totally won. We all anyway. win. <laughs> we're all winners. I do think the the drawback to buying rolled batting is storage. Ugh, yes. I mean, it's, also and it's... <laughs> <laughs> and even though I kind of store it behind my long arm, I have to go get it out. And when Ooh. you first buy it, those things are heavy. Yeah. And then I actually measure it up against the long arm to know exactly where I'm going to cut it. So you're kind of wrestling it a little bit. So that can be... Yes, if you have any kind of mobility issues that's, or strength, that's going to be a challenge. Right. Have you ever, mm, I do this with cotton, not, no, not necessarily with the wool because I don't care with that and it doesn't have memory. But if the cotton bat has been packaged for a long time. Oh, weird creases. Weird creases. And I want to let it, I will let it breathe and hang on the long arm for a while before I actually go to quilt it. So I don't have a long arm to do that with, but I have been known to, like, chuck it in the dryer with a damp wash rag. Really? For, like, 10, 20 minutes on a low heat. And, and it didn't, like, separate the fibers and make it difficult to... No. I've never done that. Mm. I don't do it frequently, but if it comes off the roll and it, or out of a package and it's like, ooh, ooh. I would not do that with wool because those are so oh, no, like no. 
So you're Fine, talking right? just 80 20. Just 80 20, or even 100% cotton, you could get away with, especially if it has a scrim because it's kind of, right. you know, pushed into that scrim. How can you tell if it's got a scrim? When you buy it, it says scrim or no scrim. Okay. I think you can look at it and tell. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. like, the scrim starts to peel off. I've seen that happen. Sometimes. Yeah. It's not great. So, you know, and I don't know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask and see if you do. I think there is a, and I've seen discussions on this online, but when you layer your batting, whether you turn it one way or the other depends on if you get the pokies in the back or not when you're quilting through it. Have you seen that discussion? And I think it has to do with the scrim. I think it has to do with scrim. If you do scrim on bottom, it's less likely to poke through on the back. Right. Okay. That but makes sense. if you're like me and you tend to buy no scrim, then pokies happen. I don't. They usually only happen to me if it is a uh, dark backing, and I don't do a lot of black or navy or really dark colored backings. I tend I to do a lot of prints because one that hides any tension or weird stitch issues in your free motion. Does and two, that's, that's what I have the most type of for batting and backing. I don't know that I've, I don't know that I've had a major problem in that, but I know people have had major discussions around yeah. it online. And they make so, like black batting for if you're doing. They dark do. Clothes. They make black batting. They make pink batting. Well, that's they make just green for batting. Well, that's bamboo environmental yay earth batting. Right. I've seen green batting. I've seen pink batting. I've seen black batting. Off white batting and white batting. Yeah. Now, do you tend to buy bleach, non bleach? Does it matter to you? I buy non bleached. And I guess unless I was doing a white quilt, which is impractical for my life, let's be honest. Which is not normal for me. I use a lot of color, and white is not, I mean, it's an accent if it's anything on yeah. it. It's not something I, I mean, there is no white on there. And I picked out all the colors. Now, I didn't create the fabric, but I picked out all the colors for this. So, yeah. I don't normally... I use a lot of bright stuff. Very yeah. little white fabric. So, I don't feel the need to buy the all-white bat. But I can see where you would. Yeah. Now, when you cut batting, when you need to trim it down, are you using scissors or are you using your rotary cutter? I use scissors. Yeah, me too. And, well, one... Cheers. Like, I want the big, long... Yeah. I have like, the spring-loaded scissors, mm -hmm. and that's what I use to cut my batting with. Now, there are specific batting scissors that I've seen. Yeah, I don't... But they've got... They're more of an angled handle, comparatively, so you're not, like, banging on the part you're cutting. It's more your hand's tilted up. Well, I'm cutting my batting nine times out of ten, leaning up against the long arm. I cut mine on the floor. When, so right I'm paste. doing the scissors like this down yeah. the side. That's why I like that spring I'm doing that way. And I yeah. find, because I, uh, I use my Fomori shears, left-handed. Thank you, gents. Uh, and I like to hear the sound of it, like, running along the floor. Just like that good, like, fabric cutting sound you get when fabric is being cut with shears at the fabric store. The sound of my childhood. <laughs> I can't say I've ever noticed that, mm. but I do use well because I'm, I'm cutting floor. funky. Yeah, you know, I'm cutting like this norm normally because I'm, and I don't measure. This is how I measure. I put the quilt top. Yeah, and then I cut it bigger. And then I cut it bigger, bigger than that. That's, That's how, how I, I do measure. It too. I don't. You got time for measuring? I go. Oh, what is it? Science 40. class? No, no. Just <laughs> whack it off. Roll the thing, put it back, and put the... Now, I will... <laughs> so, I, like, roll the batting out so it's 45 inches wide. And then I put my quilt top on top of it and cut. And so I usually use the edge of the quilt top as a guide. But sometimes I'm like, ah, I just need to get a starting point. And then, like, my cut kind of wanders off. And suddenly my batting has, like, an out big V. <laughs> oh, really? It's not frequent, but every once in a while, if I'm not paying attention. <laughs> I use... When I'm cutting, because I've rolled the batting against the long arm, so you have that big... Yeah, the bulk of the, the roll. The bulk of the roll, That's and I just know I have to stay so far away from that, so I use the bulk of the roll as my yeah. straight line and kind of judge it. <laughs> so. Now, how small a batting scrap do you save when you're trimming it off of a package or a roll? Well, remember, I make postcards, so four by six. I save that. But if you so, if you've like trimmed off a skinny strip that's two inches, you just chuck that. I chuck that, but 
but there's that um, jelly roll rug. Oh, rug? Oh, yeah. And I'm thinking that could go in that rug. Because all so, you need is a half inch for that. Right. So I'm thinking I've chucked all this stuff I could have been using for the rug. But I do save like four by six. So if it's four inches wide or six, I'll save that. Anything smaller, I normally... Where do you save it? Like what kind of container? I just stuff it under my cutting table. In your table. bra. What? <laughs> There's no need for that. <laughs> I stuff it under my cutting table. <laughs> I have a drawer um, that Nina has almost came. learned how to open, <laughs> which because, is dangerous. Okay, so when you trim a quilt up, like you have extra fabric. Yep. And I have ultimately four inches on each side. So that's like some serious binding for another project. Fabric. But because when I long arm, I will quilt mm, over yeah. on the side so there's like weird funky pieces cut out of it um, just to test the tension in the bobbin when it's on the long arm. So I will stuff it all under my cutting table and then I'll get a day. I do not stuff it in my bra because there's no need. <laughs> um, we're good there. Um, so I can't Her believe husband's nodding you PT got me like, talking yeah. about this. Stop it. Stop. Stop. I get the weirdest conversations with her, I swear to you. It's very healthy. Anyway, when I decide that I'm going to clean that out, I will clean it out and separate the fabric, stuff that in yeah, my yeah. scrap bin, and then decide whether that... So is it like a crunchy stuffing, or do you like kind of fold it? Oh, God, just crunchy. Oh, stuff gotta, it under there. i got to fold mine, because otherwise it gets all crinkly. So I tend to do like... I do fold it so it's about yay wide. I'll then take I can, a picture and you can, can post it. Then I can put it in the drawer, no. shove it down no. so the drawer will close, and then close the drawer real quick. No. So then when I open it, the batting kind of goes <laughs> out of it when I open the Mine's drawer already again. like, I'll just take a picture and <laughs> so you can see. Then when I separate the batting, I determine whether it's scrapbook size or not. Yeah. If it's not scrapbook size, it's right away. Okay. But now I'm going to have to consider these Jelly Roll rug things. I haven't made one yet, but... They look cute, and I think they would be cute in my kitchen. I do need a new kitchen rug. I need two. I want one in front of my sink and one in front of my stovetop. So I have a mat there now, but the cat's decided that it's super fun to scratch on it, and so it's time to And I've retire. got lots of jelly rolls. So, and you could do, like, Christmas one, and then your You could do one. Christmas one. <laughs> totally good. All right, anything else about batting? No, I think we're good. We have batted it out out of the park there you go that's a <laughs> quilt ref or a sports ball now we're going to take a closer look at spotlight and we will be right back Hi, we're back, and we are going to talk about baby quilts now. And now we've already established that um, this is not Pam's favorite topic. Well, no, you just, like, let's talk about baby quilts. I'm like, that's broad, any particular angle. And then, like, three other texts happened about some other subject. And then you text and said, no, no angle. And I'm like, what is she talking about? <laughs> Did autocorrect get her again? And then I realized, oh, this is <laughs> four texts ago. It's fine. That's how I talk. I my I leapfrog conversations. Oh yeah, we have like three simultaneous conversations happening at the same time. Yes, that's how I roll. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so I was at the quilt shop the other day, and I was working with. Well, I was teaching a class, but I was being um, obnoxious, and one of the uh, reps for a fabric company was in the quilt shop, and they were showing the new quilt fabric line, lines line. that are out. And so the owner, who's a good friend of mine, we were looking at different, you know, things. And so they were showing this new baby quilt fabric line, and they were saying, I'm not seeing this sell as, it's not as popular as it was five years ago. So my question was, how, are we seeing changes in how people are making baby quilts? Are we making baby quilts by a theme? Are we decorating, you know, by a fabric or? I think there is a lot more design influence on nurseries and it's not all baby pink, baby blue, baby bottles, right. 
giant safety pins, weird baby blocks that are oversized right. and will crush your baby. I think right. people are being more cognizant of a design style of like, well, I don't want to have to repaint this dang room after a year. I just want yellow and is. gray. I don't want... Yeah. Or yeah. I would like the theme to be trees versus... Right. Like, yeah, I just made a quilt that said, I want owls. And they didn't go and say, I want... Owls wearing baby bonnets holding giant baby no, bottles. No, no, no. <laughs> I want this designer print yeah. that has owls on it, blah, blah, blah. I think that it's more, I don't broader interpretation mm -hmm. of baby themes I have seen anyway. Because you made an owl quilt and I made an owl quilt for someone who had baby um, and they were totally different. I should post a picture. Of yeah. Well, they mine. specifically said we'd like owls because we want it to be a woodland theme and got a color palette. And this was one of the shop my stash videos that I did where I right. talked about like, oh, the palette they gave me was actually stitch colors. It was like teal and an orange and like kind of a dusty brown. I just think we're, it's... we're fairly not mature for a baby room, but something that would work and grow with the baby. So I was not going to turn around and make a completely babyish quilt. Right. Like it could be juvenile and fun, right. but without being so whimsical to the point that it's not right. gonna be appropriate when they're four, five, six. That I, I think that was my point is that I think that we are now making baby quilts that grow with the child that aren't just baby. And I think I'm finding myself making a little bit bigger size quilts. Yeah. Then, you know, 36 by 36. Which I have never made a quilt that small unless it was a wall hanging. Like, babies but you get bigger see, kind of quick. I mean, I think they sell those, <laughs> like, really small yeah. for tiny, I mean, tiny babies. I don't know. So I, I kind of like that we're more theme. I, gives, I think it gives us more room for design, mm -hmm. um, which is more interpretation of the parents and the, yeah. what they want, that kind of thing. So I kind of like the change. I like the style change that we're not locked. I remember 10 years ago, people were asking me to make baby quilts. And they were saying, I'm doing Winnie the Pooh. And they only wanted the Winnie the Pooh classic. And so you had to go find that classic print. The and that's hard to... And not yeah, the and not shirt. the bright reds. And, yeah. you know, and then if it wasn't being printed that year, you couldn't find it. It was hard to find, yeah. you know. So I kind of like that we're... Stepping away from that, I think there's yeah. more creativity in it. But I think, too, a lot of that goes back to better adoption of design principles when it comes to home decorating, which is uh, oh, the, the reemergence of trading spaces. Yes. Uh, and, and they talked about this on like one of the reunion shows of when trading spaces started, there wasn't a lot of talk about design in homes. Everything was very theme focused. Right. And yeah, maybe they went a little crazy and glued hay on the wall, which was oh, they not totally did. I saw them glue moss on the wall. Yeah, once. but they talked more about design as a concept and like here is a theme and here is how it is being interpreted. So having an ice cream theme doesn't mean that you have giant ice cream scoops all over your wall. It just right. means it's like it's not oh, the lamp. It I'm doesn't go, have to be an ice cream lamp. Right. I'm going to go with Neapolitan colors and kind of wink to it. Right. You know, that kind of idea. I it, like that a lot better. I'm glad we're kind of going there. Yes. And then it can... Well, I think it shows a little more imagination and creativity, and it's not quite so cookie cutter. Right. I mean, I know this is a panel, and I think panels work really well for baby quilts, honestly. But, and granted, it's a mermaid, but I don't think the whole thing has to... That can complement the room mm -hmm. in that the room could be blue and green painted. Mm -hmm. You know, and still be complemented by, you know, underwater. It could be an underwater theme mm -hmm. or whatever kind of thing. So, okay, when you give a baby quilt away, do you wash it before you give it away? Yes, I tend to wash it first. So, m for the specific reason that new parents are encouraged and pretty much, you know, told by... The detergent industry, you need to wash everything with super special detergent. Right. So there's no weird chemicals touching your baby. And so I don't want them to get the quilt. It looks one way, especially if it's got an 80% right. or 100% cotton batting, and wash it and then think, I broke it. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Now, see, I give what my happened? quilts away and I don't wash them and because I don't have that right detergent which i probably could go buy well but. i don't i don't and you know, i don't, I don't know either. what because i've not it's, been through the yeah. lesson of what uh, you're how you're supposed to wash stuff but i do i wash babies. it in general just to get kind of, and especially I just let them know a color run potential because i do yeah, mix I in batiks frequently yeah um and so well, with, with that, that owl clip yes. yeah because i don't want them and then 
a disaster where the colors run and now they're like, you gave me jacked up. <laughs> See, this is the reason you don't use white. <laughs> well, no, but I have had, I have had like a navy blue run onto yes, an off true. white or a pink Deep or something. Yeah. And mm. yeah, so I, I do for that matter. And I give a care instruction sheet that says, See, you're so hey, much better than I am. Well, I have a template. I just print one off and then there prints three on a page. And I cut one off and wrap did it up you with the share cord. that? In, did you share that in the show notes? Maybe it I think I did. If I didn't, we'll put it in the show notes this time that you guys are welcome to use. Right. Um, but it's like, hey, here's some information about your new quilt. You know, wash it, dry it on low. You know, dry it outside if you can, and let it air dry, and that'll you know keep it fresh. And if you need to store it, you know, make sure that you refold it every six months, or right. you know, rolling's even better. So it gives like that kind of don't store it in direct sunlight. So those kind of tips for people that, you know, usually they know they're getting a handmade gift, right. particularly the baby quilts I make now. Um, they're being commissioned by my one friend that I do commissions for. And her family just is like excited not only to have a new baby, but like, oh, we can't wait to see what kind of fancy quilt we get, <laughs> <laughs> which is the owl quilt <laughs> that I made last time. I think, well, I've been making a lot of baby quilts because we all have talked about my aunt calling and You need to get call to... blocking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my husband looks at the phone and goes, do you want to answer? No. Um, so I, I've been making a lot of baby quilts lately. Now, do you do it a certain size? Do you think a certain size is like baby size? I want it to at least be 40 ish wide. And I think like 45 by 60 is a decent size. Which that's close to this. Yeah. Cause even as they, yeah. the kids get bigger, that can then be a lap quilt. Yeah. I mean, they're going to use it. I think yeah. through toddler dumb. Oh yeah. Definitely. I don't know if that's word, but it should it be. It is. Yes. Toddler dumb? Kids are kind of dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Babies uh, don't care, and they're kind of dumb. <laughs> I do have one thing that I think you should always do on all baby quilts. Ready? You're going to agree with me on this one. Machine binding. Yes. Because it <laughs> holds up better in my experience. Yes, it does. And don't take time to hand bind that thing on the back. That we don't need no scalloped edges. Don't know. Mm -mm. Machine binding. You are, this is going to be washed. I'm hoping when I give a baby quilt. You want it to be used. I want it to be used. Don't hang it on a wall. Just use the heck out of it so that it's shredded and, you know, by the time they're 12. That they've used it so much that they've snuggled under it that they've, mm -hmm. yeah, I like, I mean, those are not. Show quilts that I'm gonna hang on the wall. It's definitely a utility quilt. Utility quilt that you're blessing that child with, and you want them to use it. And Likewise, I do not English paper piece any baby quilts. No, it is machine constructed. Now, do you put applique on baby quilts? I do in small amounts. Yeah, like the whole thing being applique oh, and yeah. no needle turn hand. Like, forget that noise. Babies don't care. Babies don't care. I would do machine applique every time. Um, make sure you use a small stitch to get those edges down well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And, like, I limit it to, like, a one element or, like, just oh, yeah. their name or, yeah. But I just don't think applique, that kind of applique doesn't wash as well that many times. Right. I agree. I mean, it will In wash. In my experience, yes. But not for as long as you want them to use this quilt yeah. kind of thing so yeah um that's all i had you have other stuff uh have you ever <laughs> so new parents sometimes uh when it's the first child right read all of the books I, yes i've, I've about heard that's true child development right. and what babies can and can't see and so sometimes i've gotten requests for but I have a baby and I'm like oh cool I'll make you a quilt and they're like could you make it black and white so there's high contrast and it'll help develop their eyes and I'm like uh sure and that really only applies for like the first couple months because eventually babies get to where they can see a little better they so do. value contrast uh and it's super fun like because a lot of uh play mats for babies that have like the big gym thing that goes over the top where they can lay on their back and like play with the dangly bits or you flip them over for tummy time and you flip them over so they're looking at one spot and it's like a very stark black and white print like with some spirals, man. And you just see, they get like the googly eyes. <laughs> That's pretty fun. <laughs> That's a good time. 
I've never. And then they asked. start crying because they hate tummy time. <laughs> I have never asked, no, no one's ever asked me to make a black and white quilt for a yeah. baby. I always just get told um, it's a girl or it's a boy or we don't know. I just get gender. Yeah. And then I ask, I ask the parents, what, are you, what colors are you decorating the nursery in or what theme? Or do you just want like a travel baby quilt? Because I've done that too. With like, yeah. Hey, uh, this is the quilt you take on the go in the car right. or you know. I like to find out what colors they're decorating their nursery in or what theme, and then I'm just going to do what I want. <laughs> Early American plastic crap <laughs> tends to be the theme. That was my living room decorating scheme for many years. Play school chic. <laughs> Play school chic. <laughs> Legos. Shiny plastic. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, but th then I do whatever I want. Like I, but and then I can be obnoxious and not take any of theirs into consideration. Like I had a, I had one cousin who was having his first child, and I forgot what theme they told me they wanted. But I found this cute fabric with red trucks on it, and that's what they got. <laughs> now that being said, his grandfather, which was my uncle, um, used to take me to school every day <gasps> in a red truck, and his. Grandfather was known for driving this red beat up truck that I swear to you, when he took me to school, you could look down on the floorboard, you could see the street going, <laughs> going underneath you. And my uncle Bob took me to school in that red truck. And I think when he was younger, and my cousins probably, I'm probably 15 years, 10 years older than he is, took him in that red truck. And so when I found the red truck fabric, it fit him, mm -hmm. so that's why it got into the quilt. And it had nothing to do with their theme. But they loved that quilt because of the family connection. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to look for stuff like that, too. I will say, like, if you are just stuck and you don't have any good idea other than maybe colors, think about how the quilt can be used later on. And by that, I mean most small kids really love cars things with wheels like regardless of sex both my kids played with like these kind of chunky cars right and if you're stuck and you don't know what kind of pattern to go with pick something that looks like it has pathways because then kids will take those little they'll spread it out like a play mm -hmm. mat and like make it a little race and there are some cute panels that there are that. yeah now you but you can those come and go they do yeah. but i've seen them yeah and they're cute so Anyway, but I think if you find something that connects it to that child, oh, whether yeah. it's family or, you know, that story. When he opened it up and saw the red trucks, it was like, oh. you know, it was a nod to his grandfather. And I will tell you that my cousin is the one of the many cousins that looks and walks like his granddad. So I just thought it was neat. And he liked it. So it was cool. Babies don't care, but their parents do. do. So make quilts that their parents will like. <laughs> Do babies care? Do you care? <laughs> Let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode. And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by QT Fabrics. You can learn more about their fun fabrics at qtfabrics.com. Don't forget to enter the giveaway for the fabric bundle to make your own version of Spotlight. And we'd like to thank 77 Peaches, Big Think Productions, for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. The next virtual stitch is Friday, June 8th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode is May 25th. My podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out Fridays on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, The Stitch TV Show. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.